It is so freaking difficult to make a video on this because oftentimes it's easy for all of us to get into this mindset where we look at an athlete and we say, okay, he sustained an injury or he sustained multiple injuries and he has a long road to recovery and that's going to be very mentally challenging. But when you consider the context of what happened to Tariq Cohen, then you'd understand why this is really just the most heartbreaking thing ever. If you understand his backstory, which we're going to be giving you guys an insight into based upon a letter that he wrote to his younger self literally a week ago, then you'd understand why the workout video that he posted is so heartbreaking. Before we get to the content, man, don't do anything. Just comment prayers for Turi Cohen in the comment section down below. It really is so painful to make this video. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Tariq Cohen is one of the best underdog stories in all of sports. Being selected in the fourth round of the 2017 NFL Draft, originally as a return specialist, he wasn't necessarily supposed to be such a high impact player. But before we even get to the point where we discuss what Tariq Cohen was able to do on the field that got him to the point where he got injured, you have to understand what this man went through off the field. Tariq Cohen posted a article on May 10th, 2022, documenting the difficulties of his life in a letter to himself. I mean, like, just look at the way this article opens, saying, nothing I can write in this letter could possibly prepare you for everything that is about to happen. I don't even know where to start, to be honest with you. There's just so much. Looking back on it all, it almost doesn't seem real. There will be a big bag of crack cocaine. There'll be a gun right there in your hand, ready to shoot to help you get revenge. There will be death in the family, unimaginable loss. And that's only for starters. It's going to be a lot, and you know what? I wouldn't fault you if you want to stop reading this letter right here. Not one bit. But at the same time, I know how you like to be prepared for everything and how you don't like being surprised. So I mainly just wanted to write this so you can be better prepared for three specific phone calls that are going to change your life forever. 90 seconds total of phone time, if that. That's all it'll take to turn your life upside down. One call from the three most important people in your life. Your mom, your little brother Dante, and your twin brother Ty. Tyrell. Starting in a few weeks, everything's going to change. After you're done with all the yelling, you're going to need to decide. Move away with the family or stay with your team here in Bun and play football. Moving would mess up all the contacts you've made, the people you've impressed. There'd be new coaches and teammates. It'd feel like starting all over again, and you don't want that, so you're going to let them go. You'll get your way, Tariq. Mom will let you stay back and live with Aunt Miltrine. You'll win the battle, but the bigger war? Well, let's talk about that. Because now your family, the only people you've ever been close to, they'll be gone, living in a new town an hour away. You'll basically be on your own for your senior year. You'll be living separate lives. You'll drift and so will they. Pretty soon, you're going to start noticing Dante and Tyrell making some bad choices, hanging out with guys who are smoking weed and stealing stuff on the regular. Actually, let me rephrase that. You'll know it's happening. You'll get word, but you won't fully notice it. You'll be too focused on football, what's happening on the field and there. Things couldn't be better. You'll be making defenses look silly, breaking ankles, you'll have that scholarship offer in hand. Your plan will work, Tariq. You'll be good. Everything will be rosy on the football side. But I can tell you that a decade later, you're going to look back and realize that this exact moment is when things really started going south. Mom will be working all the time, just like always, and doing that while raising three boys alone. It's going to start wearing her down. She's not going to be able to keep everything together and know what everyone's up to and chase teenage boys around every hour of every day. She's going to start throwing up her hands to it all, and in some ways, she'll just go numb to everything. She'll stand down. Then when you go off to college, everything will snowball fast. While you're doing your thing at North Carolina a and Tyrell and Dante are both going to drop out of school. It's going to eat at you when you're older. The guilt. The knowledge that if you'd been around, you never wouldn't have let them drop out. Once they do, though, run-ins with the law are going to become common. Fighting, stealing Jordans, weed. You'll try to send home what little money you have, hoping it will stop them from stealing, but it won't. You'll try tough love. You'll try the opposite 
use it, you'll try everything. And when you reach your wits end and can't think of anything else to do, you're going to sit them down and I don't want to say beg them, but like you're basically going to plead with them. Just give me a little more time. Lay low. Don't get in any big trouble for a bit more and I'll make everything right for all of us once I get to the league. I got y'all. I promise. I'll buy you all the Jordans you want. Just give me a few years. The thing is, you won't have a few years. When you sign that first contract, it's going to feel like a huge weight being lifted off your shoulders. The day before your signing bonus hits, you won't have a cent to your name. In fact, it'll be even worse than that. You'll be in the red. You'll even take a screenshot to remember it. Then, a few hours later, when the signing bonus clears, you'll have $635,000 in your account, and you'll feel like the richest man in the world. The first thing you'll go out and buy? An Escalade, a diamond encrusted watch? Nah, you're going to head over to the mall and buy a pair of Vans. You know how you always just wanted some Vans? That's all you'll need. They'll be black and white, the classic low tops. Buying those shoes and slipping them on your feet is going to make you feel so good. It's not going to last though because the money won't even be enough to buy a place in Chicago for yourself, much less set up your whole family. And your brother Dante, when he realizes that it won't all of a sudden be easy street for him with you in the league, he's going to feel that. And he'll be 18 at that point, and he'll start hearing it from his friends. Your brother's in the NFL? Why aren't you driving a Benz? Why are you still wearing those old ass sneakers? Why can't you pick up the tab? And as a result, he's going to respond by diving headfirst into drug dealing. And it's not going to be a little thing on the side anymore, Tariq. It'll be serious dealing, hard drugs, real volume, lots of money changing hands. Mom evicted from different places because of weed smell, noise violations, police visits, you name it. By that point, you'll be playing a ton for the Chicago Bears and putting up numbers, rushing, receiving, returns, even throwing passes for TDs. You'll be all over SportsCenter. People will be adding you to their fantasy teams like crazy. Now, I don't want this video to drag on too long, but I wanted to at least set up some background so you could understand what Tariq Cohen's home situation was like. And we could get to the three calls here, but I'm going to leave a link to his article in the description down below if you guys want to check that out as well. The first phone call would be right after his second season, where he just made the Pro Bowl and was named an All-Pro as a returner. The article says you'll talk for a few seconds, and in the call, it'll be Dante, his brother, saying, yo, man, I need you to bail me out. You'll talk for a few seconds, hang up the phone, and head over to mom's house. When you get there, you're going to take a look around, and you'll know what you're looking for. And there won't be a ton of furniture in there, so it'll be easy to find the stash. Without thinking twice, you'll head to the bathroom, pull out all of the little Ziploc bags, and flush thousands and thousands of dollars worth of crack cocaine down the toilet. You'll go over to the jail and bail Dante out after that. And when he gets home, it's not going to be pretty. He'll have tears streaming down his face. What did you do? How could you do this to me? He's going to call you every name in the book. Do you know how much money that was? You're just going to shake your head. I have money, bro. You don't need to be doing this. I just told you to chill and give me time. Why can't you guys just listen to me? This has got to stop right now. And you'll hope that'll be the end of it. Lesson learned. Never again, right? But it won't stop. You're going to be bailing Dante out again and again, and it'll get to the point where he's actually going to end up swallowing a bunch of drugs during one arrest. It's going to be so sad, and it will have an impact on everyone you love. Mom will just get more and more defeated, more resigned to what's going on. Then with Tyrell, it'll be a constant battle. You telling him he should be doing more to keep Dante out of trouble, and him shouting back, well, maybe if you were around more, you'd understand how hard it is. Eventually, you'll start blaming yourself for everything. In your head, you'll want nothing more than to be setting the standard, to be the role model, but you won't know what to do. It'll seem like everything you try backfires. You'll feel like you're failing as a big brother, and it'll feel like things can't get any worse. And then right on cue, they will. He receives an incoming call from his brother Tyrell. And at this point, he's prepping for an E60 documentary set to film that afternoon. When you pick up the call, you won't be expecting anything out of the ordinary. What's up, bro? Tyrell will be sobbing. Dante just got shot. And then a pause. And more sobbing. He got shot in the head, Tariq. It then talks about how Tariq Cohn walks into the hospital, sees his brother lying there, there with a bunch of tubes, wires, and bandages. And he'd hear the nurses and doctors talking, saying that he has severe brain injuries, paralyzed, and probably won't ever walk again. You'll also hear the story of what happened. Dante had been in a shootout a few days earlier where some kids tried to rob him. He had fired his gun and hit someone, and apparently this shooting was in retaliation for that. The last phone call, just to give you an idea of how difficult this man's personal life has been, was from his mother, saying Tyrell hasn't come home tonight. I'm worried. And the phone call has to do with the 
the fact that they found his little brother Tyrell's body at an electrical plant near the scene of a car accident. And this is before we even get to what the man has gone through on the football field, where people are calling him soft consistently for him dealing with an ACL and MCL tear in addition to a tibial plateau fracture, which is why it's so heartbreaking to see Tariq Cohen's most recent video on Twitter. Now that we got everything out of the way, now that we built it up to this point, all the way to May 17th, 2022, the latest in the Tariq Cohen saga is the fact that this man was training and getting ready to finally make his return on the football field. After missing a majority of the 2020 season, bear in mind he only played three games that season, and all of the 2021 season, Tariq Cohen once again suffered a major setback. Roll the footage. add all of these things together, it just makes it all the more heartbreaking for Tariq Cohen. How can you not root for this man at this point? I'm hoping that despite this Achilles tear, Tariq Cohen comes back better than ever. At this point, when you tear an ACL, an MCL, as well as a tibial plateau fracture, in addition to tearing your Achilles and you're a five foot six running back in the NFL at the age of 26, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I hope I'm wrong. I hope this isn't the end. I hope things get better for him. I hope there's some good news that finally comes into this man's life because if there's one thing that we can all agree on, it's that Tariq Cohen has gone through way too much. Make sure you leave a prayer in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike.